Welcome back to Game Development with Pygame. This is part 17 of our platformer game. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to use masks to do what's called pixel perfect collision. Okay, in the last video, we added some enemies to our game. And if you've played it very much, you've probably noticed that the enemy collisions don't work quite right. If I can get an example here, I'll see if I can get the a, a collision to happen like I'm talking about. Maybe. Yeah, there was one. Let's try again. There we go. Did you see that? So, looked like I died even though the two sprites didn't touch. And the reason that's happening is because of the type of collision we're doing. You might remember this slide if you watched the video where we made the shooter game. The standard collision in Pygame is called an AABB collision, Axis Align Bounding Box. We use the bounding box of the sprite, which is the rectangle that encloses the entire sprite. And we just see if those two rectangles overlap. And this is great because it's really fast. So the computer can do a lot of these comparisons really fast without introducing any lag or, uh, or slowing down your game. And that's fine, but like in our jumper game, you get this situation where the player dies and they feel bad because it doesn't look like they got hit. And so one solution to that, which is what we did in our shooter game was we used um, circular bounding boxes. And so it's a collision if the two circles intersect. And you can set the size of the circle to be something reasonable and, um, and get collisions that look a little better. But this also has a problem because not every, not every sprite fits well inside a rectangle or a circle. So you need some more options. So one option you can do is you can use another type of collision, which is uh, a ratio. So you can take the rectangle or the circle ratio, I mean the rectangle or the circle collision function, and you can pass in a ratio. And what this does is just scale the circle or the box by whatever number you pick. And you, and, you know, 7.7 7 here would be 70%. And so you can see the boxes got smaller, the circles got smaller, and that can work. But you're still having to deal with things like the box being centered on the sprite, which might not align it right. You don't get a lot of control. So in the cases where this isn't enough, then we have a third option. And that third option is something called a mask. Okay, to demonstrate the mask, I've made a little example program here. So we have our player, the bunny, and we have the, the enemy. And I've shown the bounding boxes by these little white rectangles. So right now our problem is, if I move this over, that this is a collision in our current setup. This is a collision. So you're hit even if you have this much space in between. And we don't want that. So to do what's called pixel perfect collision, meaning I want to know if exactly this bunny shape hits exactly this enemy shape, we can create something called a mask. And a mask looks like this. So when we tell Pygame to create a mask, it looks at the pixels of the, of the object and it ignores the background so remember we said set the color key to black so it's ignoring this black background and it's just keeping track of where the pixels are in the shape okay and so i'm actually going to turn that off and i'm just going to put on i'm just going to show the outline of the mask so this is the outline of each sprite's mask and now you can see if you look up here where it says whether we've hit or not, we're not going to detect a hit until those two masks intersect like that. And so now 
this is a hit. If I were to be down lower, this would be a hit there. And so what the computer is doing is it's going along and looking at the bunny and saying, where's the first point where I see the bunny pixels overlap with, or the bunny's mask overlap with the enemy's mask. And that's what this point is here. And it can even tell us what point that was. This is the coordinates on the bunny uh, sprite. So it's 10 pixels over and 83 pixels down. And we don't really need to know this location, but you can imagine sometimes if you have things hitting, you might want a little explosion to, to show over here or something to happen at the location of the hit. We don't really need that. We just want to know that we actually had these two sprites run into each other. Okay, and so that's what we're going to set up on our game right now. The only other thing you need to know about mask collisions is compared to the rectangle, they are very expensive. And what I mean by expensive is they take a lot longer for the computer to calculate. So it's having to do a lot more checking. Now in our case for this uh, jumper game, we're never going to have more than one or two enemies on the screen at the same time. So checking the, the player against two of these enemies, we're never going to notice any kind of slowdown. But if you had a game where you had hundreds of bullets flying around and enemies and lots of stuff going on, uh, you could start to have this create lag really fast. So the way that uh, people typically solve that problem, when they, they want pixel perfect collision, but they also want it to be fast, is you do rectangle collisions first. So in case of here, there was no collision, we just move on. If there was a rectangle collision, then you do a mask collision. So that way, if this situation happens, you'll find it, but you're not doing any mask testing when things are way out here, like this. So you get, to, you get the speed of the rectangle collision kind of narrowing down your options, and then you, if two things are close to each other like this, then you check to see if they actually collided. Um, we don't need to do that in this program because we're not going to have that performance problem. But it's something to keep in mind if you decide to do any mask style collisions like this. Okay, so let's go and add this to our code. So you'll see this is going to be really easy. We just need to go over to our sprites and we're going to go to the player sprite. And now the player sprites, the player sprites image changes all the time, right? So depending on what we are doing as we're moving. So I'm going to go down to where we do the animation, right? So here is where we pick which image we're going to use, right? We either load the walking frames or the standing frames to do the idle animation, and we pick whichever one of those that is, and we set our image to that. So since we've changed our image, I'm just going to put at the end here, we're going to set our mask. And it just has to be called self.mask. If it's called self.mask, the collide function will find it. And so you can create the mask in a couple of different ways. But the easiest way is to just say, create it from surface and tell it to use the self.image. Okay? And we don't need the threshold option. We can go into that later. So this is just going to make a mask from whatever our image is, which we've now set to whichever frame we're on. So we do that with the player. And then we're actually going to do the same thing with the mob. Uh, it has the same issue because we're changing the, the, the image. It only has two, but we are changing them. So we're going to make our mask update to match the frame we're on. This is the same thing from surface, from our image, and I don't need that. Okay, so now both of these sprites have masks, and all we have to do is go over to our collision here in the update to see if we hit a mob, and say now we want to collide the player with the mobs, but we want to use the pg.sprite.collide mask. Um, we want to use the collide mask function. Okay, and now if we run this, we will see what happens. 
Okay. So let's wait for a mob to spawn that I can run into. There we go. Do you see how it overlapped? So let's try a couple more. So our collisions are working. Ah, uh, do you see how close I got there? So I was really close. I was inside the bounding box for sure on that one. But it didn't count as a collide. Yeah, see I'm not colliding until I actually am intersecting. So that's all there is to mass collisions. So hopefully you're thinking to yourself, that was pretty easy. All we did was really three lines of code. Adding a mask on each sprite was one was one command, and then we just used the collide mask function. And we instantly get that much better collision. So if you want to try this out and do this on your game, if you're making something else, uh, just remember to keep in mind that performance issue. If you have tons of sprites flying around the screen, uh, this can start to get slow and really hurt your frame rate. So uh, if, you, if you do have that problem, remember to just do go back to doing a, a rectangle collision. If you have a rectangle collision, then do a mask collision. And that should help quite a bit with your performance. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Uh, please like the video below. That helps other people find it. And make sure you subscribe so you can see the next video when it comes out. All right, thanks for watching.